All right, let's wrap up today's lesson with part three. This part is all about the math boxes for lesson seven two. For today's math boxes, you need to answer number one, So circle number one on today's math box is seven two. On this one, you need to write an equation with an unknown and then give your answer for that missing angle. Then for number two, it says you're gonna use a picture or a number model to show how to solve this problem. It takes one half cup of salt to make one batch of salt dough. How much salt is needed to make five batches? This problem seems very similar to the problems that we did in part two of this lesson about baking muffins. So let's think about what they're asking us to do. It takes one half cup of salt to make one batch of the salt dough. How much salt does it is needed to make five batches? So our question, how much salt is needed to make five batches? Circle those numbers and underline the question. There's not a great word here to box in, but I bet you know what to do if you did number two on your own from page 233. In the answer, you write it down here with the unit cups and then tell between what two whole numbers that answer lies. So whatever you get for your answer, think about rounding it down to a whole number and up to a whole number to tell what two whole numbers your answer falls between. For number three, it's more subtracting of fractions like on yesterday's math boxes, so this one should be pretty easy. When it comes to putting your answer in the Google form, you will just have to type your answer, not the whole equation. For number four, it says you need to use a protractor. And since most of us don't have those at home, we're gonna X out number four. So we'll do number one, number two, number three, skip number four, then solve number five. And you need to be solving this problem using partial quotients. If you can do it in your book, you can just extend the table down on both of these or you can rewrite the problem in your notebook, whichever one is easiest for you. What I'm gonna do is review number 5A with you, then you're gonna do 5B on your own. Since it's so little on my screen, I'm gonna write down here in the white space. So we have 628 divided by four. I don't know how many times four goes into 628, but I can start by looking at the six. Does four go into just six? It sure does. Four can go into six one time. And then there are two other digits that I covered up. So I'm gonna make two zeros to represent those two other digits in 628. Then I multiply at the top. I have to ask myself, what is 100? times four. I know that 100 times four is 400. So now I can subtract. Eight minus zero is eight, two minus zero is two, and six minus four is two. There's my new dividend. Now I have to ask myself, how many times can four go into 228? I'm not sure, but I know two, four can't go into just the first digit two, but four can go into 22. Four can go into 22 five times. And then the eight is the digit that I covered up and there was only one of them, so I write only one zero. Now I multiply that 50 times my divisor, four. 50 times four, I know four times five is 20 and then that other zero from 50 now I can subtract. And I have to ask myself on this last step, how many times does four go into 28? So you can count by fours and see how many times four can go into 28. 
Hmm, how many times can four go into 28? Well, six fours is 24. That means seven fours is 28. Seven times four is 28, and we subtract with no remainder left. Now we can add up our partial quotients. And it looks like the answer for 628 divided by 4 is 157. Make sure you write that above the answer for part A, 157 for our answer. You're going to do part B on your own. You can do it on your book. You can do it in the margins. You can do it on another piece of paper. But you will have to record your answer for 5B in the Google form. Then for uh, <clears throat> excuse me, problem 6, it's another story problem. It says Ray and Jenny shared a slab of clay. Ray used 5 eighths of the clay and Jenny used 3 eighths of the clay. Which number model shows how much of the clay they used together? Circle the best answer. Well, if I'm using my cube strategy, I'm going to circle 5 eighths of the clay. That's what Ray used. Then 3 eighths of the clay to represent how much Jenny used. They ask you, which number model shows how much of the clay they used together? That used together tells me I am probably going to be, what? Think about what together means. So you're going to pick a number model, A, B, C, or D, to tell which one best represents how much clay they use together. Then, when you're done with that last problem, math box number six, be sure that you have answered all of the questions on today's math Google form. So make sure you haven't forgotten any of them on there. Then you'll click the submit button when you're all finished. If you have any questions about the videos today or the problems, especially the ones that you have to do on your own, please let me know and we can talk about it during our Google Meet time.